I published quite a few amplifiers during the next week about, uh, with op-amps. But this is more or less a classical, very properly working audio amplifier. It works even somewhat better compared to the circuits that I've published. And um, the other circuits are always, sorry, are also okay. Work very properly, but this amplifier has somewhat more audio power. Say it's 5 up to 8 watt. It's completely classic and when you go to the internet you will surely find on all kinds of websites uh, this circuit or another circuit. But I developed it uh, more or less myself and um, I want to tell more about it. Let's listen to the music first. Here is the setup again with these endless heat sinks. I always use um, no uh, isolation material when I screw uh, these uh, transistors to the heatsink. And that has um, a good effect. The transistor can get rid of its heat very properly. So that's a way to do uh, this. Of course, these two heatsinks may not get in contact with each, with each other because the collector is here on the positive lead and here the collector uh, the emitter is on the negative lead. So that's something to take in account. Here the whole circuit very sloppy but it works very good. I've made it in the past a few times this circuit and I've published it in one of my books. And another video is also on YouTube about this amplifier, but what I made now is more specific and um, I made some adaptations. Let's listen first. Always the same music anyway. This is another another music. Scope. So it has, in my opinion, a very pleasant sound. Let's go back to the circuit. I um, want to demonstrate, I want to tell something more about that circuit. Here three diodes in a row that create a voltage drop. That makes this Darlington, this is a double Darlington, that uh, biases exactly this double Darlington. When you add one diode, there's an enormous uh, quiescent current. When you take one out of that row, it doesn't function and you will hear crossover distortion. So that's critical. These three diodes of this type number. Here a resistor, you can do some experiments. Take it somewhat higher or somewhat lower. This was the experimental best value. Pin connections of the transistors. This is an important part, an uh, adaptation that I made to the circuit that I published earlier on YouTube. I've used here a potentiometer 
and a 10 microfarad capacitor that's uh, connected to the wiper and it sets the bass response and also it sets the amplification that's important here you can set the amplification more amplification leads in this case to somewhat more uh, distortion but anyway it's what you want and what you like sometimes um, a little bit distortion is no problem here is a 50 picofarad capacitor that protects the circuit uh, against, against radio signals that enter the base uh, it shortcuts uh, AM radio stations the, such an amplifier is in fact very sensitive and you can consider this as a kind of antenna so it could be that you hear radio stations when you operate this amplifier but this capacitor prevents that this capacitor 470 picofarad prevents high frequent oscillations of this amplifier often not uh, seen or drawn in schematics on the internet but it's important and uh, check the whole circuit with the scope and um, this tiny capacitor kills all high frequency oscillations say between uh, 30 kilohertz <coughs> and 100 kilohertz here we set the bias of the Darlington in fact you set the bias of the complete circuit you will surely hear and see see it on the scope and hear it in the loudspeaker box when you turn this potentiometer here I used a 1k uh, potentiometer uh, because the amplification is quite high so you can keep the whole input circuit low impedance and that's good uh, because uh, otherwise with a too high uh, value input uh, potentiometer the circuit gets more sensitive for hum the protective resistor and here you can use one microfarad, microfarad non-polar and also here but you can also use here 0.47 microfarad that's half of the value one microfarad is advised when you uh, will take the maximum out of the circuit especially on um, the base frequencies you can connect it to the aux output of a CD player or a smartphone anyway that was more or less all to tell the optimum voltage is 16 volt <coughs> sorry 16 volt or 15 volt 12 volt works also very properly no problem is that when you operate this uh, amplifier on long loudspeaker wires could be that the thing starts to oscillate the um, solution for that is this resistor uh, 47 ohms up to 100 ohms and sometimes you see here also in this lead a small capacitor of say uh, 50 nanofarad to prevent that oscillation speakers can be connected between uh, 4 and 16 ohms the uh, ohms value of a speaker is always uh, the so called nominal value because the in fact it's an amplifier that amplifies uh, certain frequencies and the impedance of the speaker is in fact frequency dependent I've used here a 3300 microfarad capacitor and of course with amplifiers there's always one and only point to where the circuit is um, soldered with a wire to the metal cabinet or to the shielding plate on the back side here I have no shielding plate on the back side because it's all experimental but uh, with a tin plate on the back side um, you will surely uh, hear and see on the scope that it helps to prevent 
Ahem. Especially the, not the ground loop hum, but hum that is caused by long wiring, sensitive wiring and unshielded, an unshielded input. used here that 1k potentiometer volume control here the bias potentiometer in the middle of the screen and here the potentiometer that sets the amplification and the Darlingtons are here this is one Darlington and this is the other one the two entry R55 combined with this BD transistor A lot of work, all my experiments have made my uh, workbench quite a mess, but anyway, no problem. Always fun to be uh, busy with uh, these kinds of uh, experiments.